Hi Georgina. Hello. So we finally got there and yep. it is recording. Cool, it is online too. Good. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Uh, okay. So I thought today's video, we can share our experiences of coping with Christmas when you have a chronic illness or disability. And that yeah. includes kind of mental health, physical health, um, any kind of um, thing like autism, which, which I have. Um, so just sharing our experiences of past Christmases and also tips on how like tips we would like to share on coping with Christmas when you have a chronic illness or disability. So what's what's kind of like what's Christmas like for you with your kind of chronic illness and do you want to just give a bit of an introduction to yourself? Yeah so I'm Georgina obviously um I have Ellis Danlos syndrome and uh functional neurological disorder is like my main two um and actually the past three Christmases since I've been ill I've actually not been able to participate properly so yeah do you want to so I'm Naomi I'm 27 my illnesses are hypermobility spectrum disorder which is very much the same as hypermobile Ellis Danlos there is yeah. very few differences in the kind of conditions I also have um ME which is myalgic encephalopathy also known as chronic fatigue syndrome I also have functional neurological disorder and autism and they're my main um illnesses that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. I find that we kind of just do the main ones whenever we have to like introduce ourselves and stuff because yeah, most of us have like this my first time doing a collaboration so but I thought it would be good um to kind of like rather than just me sharing my experiences I thought this topic would be a good one to kind of do a collaboration with you on and um so thank you for agreeing and hopefully it'll be helpful to people on both our YouTube channels no, thank you for asking me this is also my first collaboration so yeah so um so how do what What's Christmas like for you with a chronic illness? Uh, quite complicated, actually. The first, I got sick in 2017. So Christmas 2017, I was just like unwell because I'd only been sick for about 11 months and I was still getting my head around trying to get used to it. And not. I wasn't diagnosed until last year, so I didn't know what was wrong with me, if it was going to be like a forever thing. Um, and then 2018, I was actually in hospital. Um, that was a very strange Christmas. Um, cause I was in with my FND before I was diagnosed with FND and they thought I'd had a stroke for a couple of days. Um, so I couldn't talk and the whole of my left side was paralyzed. So I was just there texting people and all I could really do was like smile at people, which is very weird and then last year so Christmas 2019 my FND was at its worst ever point so I was having hundreds of seizures a day I was dissociating all the time and I really didn't interact with people as much as I had done in the past how about you yeah, so Christmas are quite complicated because with ME, I have quite limited energy levels. And with my FND, I also have quite a lot of seizures. And then obviously with autism, I find it hard with the change of routine and kind of like people because I quite like quiet. Um, and um, so it's kind of like, trying to juggle kind of like what's going on in the house and um it's really hard to predict with my health kind of like I'd, I'd never know when I'm going to have a seizure or when I'm going to go into spasm 
or anything like that. And I kind of always say that with chronic illness, there's no days off. And, and obviously kind of like with family who are a little bit like my brother gets quite scared around my seizures, they freak him out. Um, so he ha- so he like obviously um, it's kind of obviously sorry brain fog um so um yeah christmas is kind of like managing so for me it's kind of i crunch i have a schedule for my day to help me manage my activity and energy levels and rest periods um so i alter that a little bit for christmas and i think for christmas with the events it's trying to decide what events to go to and which events to sit out of or which ones just to make a brief appearance of hello everyone I'm just going to go now. Um, And I have spent Christmases in hospital as well. Um, And I do find that staff try to make it as nice an experience as possible. And last year I was in hospital over Christmas, but I was allowed a couple of days home. Um, And I think as well, the other thing that's difficult at Christmas I don't know whether you find this is obviously like your support network of professionals either services close for the holidays and new year and people go on annual leave so you've got less support one of the things um I kind of would kind of as a tip to people is if you struggle with noise sensitivity is to invest in some noise cancelling earplugs um yeah I find them really helpful and and also to have a nice place where you can have time out. So for that's my for me, that's my bedroom. So I kind of create kind of like a calming place to go where I can get some kind of quiet and some time out and some time to myself just to like just breathe because when you've got people going around all the time and I think as well kind of I do struggle with my mental health and when you've got people around all the time it can get a little bit like overwhelming because it's almost like I think as well with your physical health you're trying really really hard to kind of keep up with everything that's going on at Christmas but your body just can't keep up with everything and I think what's difficult is that kind of sadness because you kind of like have to say I can't do this activity this event I can't see these people because my body just won't allow it today your family have to kind of like work around your health problems um and it's kind of like and I think I think for me with new year as well um it's that loss of kind of like a year gone where I've been ill and not much has really happened in my life and the thought of another year ahead of dealing with my chronic health problems and all that entails and my life probably not going like very far again yeah like most people who don't have chronic illnesses they're like new year new start, new me, and we're just like, we can't really do that. We don't just, like, get to not have a chronic illness. And that's kind of damaging to us sometimes because we think, oh, yeah, this year is going to be great, and then two months later you're in hospital or something. So what would your tips be to people living with chronic illness on coping at Christmas? I actually, when we're like a big family, especially on my mum's side, um, so when they're all around, there are like 15 people or something. And I actually tend to do all the cooking because it's just me. Like, I'm like, oh, I'll do this and everyone else can chat. So like having some time away is definitely a big thing. And do you find, do you have to decide what events you go to and which ones you sit out of just to manage your kind of like symptoms? I do, but I kind of ignore all of that at Christmas. Right. Which obviously isn't very healthy, but I'm like, I want to do this and I want to do this. And 
I kind of just force myself through it. And then I spend all the time in between just like lying in bed, watching telly or something. Yeah, that is a hard thing about Christmas because there is so much going on. And you as kind of like a person want to kind of keep up because you don't want your... For me, it's like I don't want my chronic illness to dictate my life. Yeah. Um, And so, like, Naomi wants to keep up with everything, but Naomi's body isn't quite in sync with what Naomi wants to do. And I think as well, it's just... um, like for me with with my hypermobility problems I have a lot of gastro problems so it's trying to kind of like um like with Christmas dinner it's trying to have a nice family meal without kind of like making my gastro problems really worse and then kind of being in so much pain and kind of then kind of being kind of like really kind of sick and as well as kind of um that I struggle with chronic migraines so um and one of the triggers for my fnd seizures is flashing lights so i find kind of if like somebody puts the christmas tree lights on flashing mode it'll trigger seizures yeah that was the same as me last year um i had a new trigger for my seizures which was flashing lights So whenever I'd have to leave the house, I'd put a jumper over my head so I couldn't see anything. Um, Because, like, most people, when they set their lights, they don't think about, oh, this is flashing. They just think it looks really cool, which it does, but not very many people have seizures. People think that strobe lighting is just what you get in nightclubs, but it can be anything like bike lights or Christmas lights anything that like flashes over a certain amount um is classed as a strobe light um, yeah, like trees uh, like the sun shining through trees if you're going yeah. like 30 miles an hour or something like you wouldn't think that that would be strobe lighting but yeah it is yeah I found that as well um but yeah, I definitely like one of the things um, I would recommend to people is to create a schedule for Christmas. Um, I I like schedules. Um, I find them helpful to manage my energy levels. Um, so I've got like a schedule for like Christmas cards and wrapping. Then I also will kind of make a schedule for what events are going on at Christmas so that I know like when I can have my rest periods, when I can do that event, how much of that event I can do, whether I do that event or not. Um, and I really struggle with noise with with my kind of ME and my autism, which is where the kind of like earplugs come in quite helpful. But also if I'm just needing just some rest and like there's a family gathering downstairs and I just need some quiet. Yeah, I... I struggle with noise too so I have like three different types of earplugs that help and like at Christmas or like when there are loads of people around kind of just move away and like sometimes the noise is all right so like I go to open mics when they're on they're not at the moment because of COVID um and I'm fine with those but simple things just like clapping or clicking your hands and people singing happy birthday on Zoom or something, I'll literally just stick my fingers in my ears because it just like, I I can't really explain what happens. It's just really uncomfortable. Yeah. I find noise painful, like physically painful. And like yeah. at the with like one of our neighbours is, is doing some construction work. So I've had my earplugs in most of today just to kind of like tone down the uh, construction noise. Uh, yeah but yeah it's it is difficult people who don't understand just think kind of like you're being rude or you're just being a bit of a scrooge because you're not kind of fully participating yeah. in Christmas yeah like with my EDS I also have gastro issues and one time we were out in a restaurant and the waitress said oh is she a picky eater and we just like 
kind of glared at her and she went away. But I could only eat like three different things and none of them were on the menu. So I just sit there with a drink. But like at Christmas, you kind of want to be able to eat Christmas food. So sometimes I do and then I pay for it for a few days with like stomach pain and everything. Um, Or I don't and I feel like I'm missing out. It's like trying to do things but not do too much of things. Um, Like I'm lucky because um, when we have Christmas like on my mum's side, um, the past couple of years it's been scheduled to be here so I don't have to go anywhere. And my dad's is only like half an hour away and he has like a small side of the family anyway. Just it's just like him, my stepmom, his parents. So there are only like six of us. And it's like small. And last year I was in my wheelchair all the time, so I could wheel around his house. It's like a lot more accessible than it is here. We have so many steps. And it was just like I actually enjoyed last Christmas even though I couldn't remember very much because of my seizures and my dissociation yeah I find um because we've got quite a small family and they live in different parts of the country so obviously with Covid this year we're not going to be able to see family as much which is helpful but I feel horrible saying that because obviously like Christmas is a time for family um but I think kind of like one thing that I found kind of Christmas aside is like for so long I've been housebound and I've not been able to kind of join in on social activities or like having to go to hospital appointments and it just like knocks it out of me for days and I'm having kind of like seizures on the ambulance that takes me to my appointments because I'm so tired out because tiredness is the trigger for my seizures um and obviously Emmy and tiredness and seizures and tiredness so I just I have kind of lots of seizures so like this year because lots of things have been more virtual like hostel appointments have been via telephone or video link it's been a lot more accessible and I think kind of this Christmas things will be more virtual which be a bit more accessible for kind of people with chronic illnesses yeah things being virtual is definitely like an upside to all of it and I kind of feel horrible saying it but at the same time everything has got more accessible and like I'm I hate phone calls but not having to get up really early has just been amazing like for hospital appointments and stuff I mean I had to get up at six o'clock the other day because I had to go in because mm. I had an MRI but the rest of the time I can literally just like wake up five minutes before and have the appointment in bed it's definitely helpful and also like having virtual Christmas with family I think will help as well because um on my mom's side we have a giant family and uh one of my mom's sisters and her children are in Hawaii my mom's other sister and her children are in Germany and um all of it's like a big deal being able to see them on Christmas so as well as being Christmas and Christmas is a big deal anyway it's like the only time for a year or two years or something that we get to see them so it's like a huge deal the Christmas and then it's like puts more pressure on me to like join in in things even though like my mum says, oh, it's fine if I don't do this. I feel like I have to do it. Yeah, same for us because because our family's spread out around the UK. Christmas is often the only time that we get to see them. Um, so it's that kind of like pressure to kind of like spend as much time with them as possible. 
when actually I'm needing to be in bed resting, having kind of like seizures so publicly, even though it is family. Um, and I get really frustrated with myself because I just want to have like a normal Christmas. But because of like my seizures and my other symptoms, like I can't quite have kind of like Christmas in my pre-illness life, if that makes sense. Yeah, like we want it to be how it was five many years ago before everything happened. And we try and live up to that, but it never goes well. And I think I'm still working out Christmas because I first became un- unwell in 2013 uh, whilst at uni and then I had to drop out of uni because of my health. But I didn't get any, like my, in terms of like my ME, I didn't actually get my ME diagnosis confirmed until 2017. And um, like f and d being questioned for several years, but it wasn't until I saw my professor in London in 2017 when he kind of like, because he's such a specialist in f and that he kind of like confirmed that diagnosis. Um, but it's just kind of, um, I'm just like, so it's just kind of still trying to work out how to live with the condition. Um, like, and like even it's always changing. Time. Yeah. Like one Christmas you can do however much stuff and you have these symptoms and the next Christmas it can be completely different. And that like goes on a day to day basis as well. Mm, definitely. But especially with like things that happen once or twice a year, you in like one day, like let's say last Christmas, I worked out how I could manage those symptoms. And then this Christmas, it will be completely different. So I can't even use those coping mechanisms or anything. Yeah, it's the same for me, obviously, like 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 I mentioned earlier, like my ME's worse this year. So it'll be different to how I managed last Christmas. Yeah. And my brother is kind of visiting. And as much as I love my brother, he is so like he's the life and soul of the party, which is typical of him. And he like with like my dad and my my dad's going a bit deaf in his old age, though he doesn't realise it. So he plays his music quite loud, and my brother plays his music quite loud. And then obviously, like if I say to my brother, "I've got a migraine," can you turn the music down? He's like, "You had a migraine yesterday," and I'm like, "Well, that's because they're chronic, and I have migraines about twenty times a month." Um, so it's kind of like family understanding your needs and working around your needs as well as trying to work out your own needs and things like that and kind of um going back to kind of like tips is ensuring you've got enough medication to get you through like and medical supplies to get you through christmas yeah I've i've got some medical supply ordering to do um just to make sure that I'm not going to run out of medical supplies and medication over Christmas. I haven't, I haven't even thought about that. Like I have two weeks, I like order my medication two weeks before I run out and I get it through pharmacy to you. So it's all posted to me. And it's only been like the past few days that it's occurred to me. I haven't got the prescription I ordered last week and it will be because of all the Christmas posts. Mm. I'm going to have to, even though I only sort of, I always sort out my medications on a Sunday evening and like I go through, put them all in the pill holders and then like do the orders for which ones I need. I'm going to have to go through again and work out, well, I need these ones now because my doctor's not going to be working over Christmas and over New Year. So I think kind of, I wanted to try and keep it as short as possible just because I know we have energy level low energy levels and just need to try and kind of get on with our day and obviously I for me on my YouTube channel I sub, I subtitle everything um okay. that takes me extra energy but is there anything else that you wanted to bring to this collaboration for your channel or any any other yeah. tips you have for people 
I don't think so. I should probably should have written down some tips before I started. I did have some, and I don't know what I did with them, which is typical me. Yeah. I did remember some things. I did remember the medication, and I remembered having a quiet place, and I remembered earplugs. Um, and uh, so that's uh, so I think I did well re- remembering three things because normally yeah. I can't remember, like I can't remember uh, something I did five minutes ago. Yeah. So, um, but it is n- it is nice to like enjoy the nice things about Christmas and to try yeah. and put y- your illness aside as much as you can to try and kind of like. Because my friend has this saying where your life is like a piece of cake and you've got 10 portions, but only one portion is your health. So it's trying to kind of like, at Christmas, it's trying to put your health aside, focus on kind of like everything else. Yeah, like without forgetting about it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for doing this collaboration with me. Um, Thanks for asking me. It's been a bit disjointed, but hopefully we've kind of put something together that will be helpful for people to watch and um, understand how to cope with Christmas and our experiences and things like that. Bye for now. Bye.